Hey, what's up? Rob Arnold here. And if you are the owner of an Evertune bridge, then like me, you've probably been amazed with it and just how almost magically it stays in tune and kind of just requires no maintenance whatsoever. Maybe you've also wondered, how do I change strings on this thing? Or what happens if I change strings on here? Or what if I want to change the guitar's tunings? How do I do that? And what's going to happen? Because there's kind of a lot of unknowns going on in there. But the thing is, it's actually easy once you wrap your head around it. And so today on this guitar here, those are the things I'm going to do. A simple tuning change and a string change. And afterwards, we'll analyze what happened to the bridge. Did things stay in tune? Did things stay intonated? We'll check that out as I'll be doing it with a different gauge set of strings, a different brand set of strings uh, than, than what's currently on the guitar. So there are going to be some variables and I'm excited even for myself to find out what's going to happen. So let's find out. Okay, so this guitar is an ESP LTD MH 1007 ET. It's basically an MH 1000, but the seven string version, obviously equipped with an Evertune bridge. And uh, I just recently acquired this as B stock from Musician's Friend. So I actually don't know if I'm the first owner of it. Was it a return? Was it just like an open box? Was it a demo there? I don't know, but the thing is basically flawless. And so I'd like to think maybe I'm the first to check it out. But that being said, I have no idea how old these strings are. I have no idea what gauge they are. I have no idea what brand they are, but the guitar is in tune here. There we go, E. So we've got a standard E through E with a B for the seven string. So just a B standard tuning here. Um, and just briefly, how the Evertune works is once you set it up so that it's the tuning that you'd like, it stays like that no matter what type of pitch variance you implement upon it. Like, watch this. We're in B, and I'm gonna tune the tuner. Nothing changes, listen. Crazy, right? Watch this. I'm bending the string there. Like, full step, step and a half. Nothing is happening, and that is the point of it, that basically every single string, in theory, every single note on the fretboard will always be in tune no matter what. No matter what the temperature change, humidity, no matter if your tuners get knocked, it's all going to stay in tune. Now that sounds awesome, but sometimes you want some vibrato. I know I do, so you can do that too. And I'm not here to explain everything about the Evertune and exactly how it works, but just that brief overview. But to take it a little bit further, because we're gonna need to talk about this when I'm changing the strings um, or afterwards, is that there are three zones to the Evertune. Zone one is what they refer to as the backstop. Zone two is the ideal zone you wanna be in. And zone three is what they call the bend stop. So right now, if I hit this seventh string, like I said, nothing happens. When I tune the tuning key, we are in zone two. But if I detune it all the way to we do hear a tuning change, a pitch change, listen. I'm detuning. Still nothing. There it goes. An obvious uh, pitch change there. It dropped in pitch. That means we've hit the backstop and we are in zone one. I'm gonna tune it back up until we're in zone two. Back in zone two. Now I'm increasing pitch. Nothing's happening. I'm gonna wait till we do hear an increase in pitch. There we go. Now we're in zone three. So again, Zone one, the backstop, is when we tune down until we actually heard a decrease in pitch, and then tune back up, we're in zone two, all that way. I mean, I probably turned that tuning key five full rotations before we hit zone three, where we heard an upward pitch change. Now we're in zone three, but we wanna be in zone two, and no matter where we are in zone two, we will not change pitch. So I like to get as close to zone three as possible because that will provide a little bit of bending, none there, but let's get up to zone three and then I'm gonna back it off about a quarter turn. There we go, now I'm gonna back it off. So we're super close to zone three, as close as we can be, and watch. 
Now we're getting some pitch bend. That way you can have some vibrato and stuff. Lots of players don't require vibrato. Just playing straight chords, don't need any vibrato or any, uh, vibrato or any bending like that. Totally cool. You just stay in zone two. But I like to get all my strings as close to zone three as possible so that when I'm soloing, any type of bend, it just can feel as close to normal, a uh, normal guitar and a normal bridge as possible. And you still get that realism of the vibrato and stuff. So that being said, we're just gonna rip close to zone three there, like I said. And now I'm going to drop the sixth string from B to A. So that's a whole step. The, uh, the ever tune requires a special Allen key here. Man, I wanna say it's 2.5 millimeter. I think maybe I read that. I can't remember exactly, but if I'm wrong on that, a correction will appear on the screen right now, but hopefully I'm right. Uh, anyways, it's not like a, a regular Allen key that I'm used to for like a Floyd locking nut or adjusting Floyd's. It's a little bit smaller. So anyways, there are three spots here. Right here is where we tune. This is for adjusting your action. And this is for adjusting the intonation. Barely ever have to use any of them. And in that order, you probably use them from, from least uh, greatest to least. So again, tuning, action, which is your string height from the fretboard and your intonation, which is your string's overall pitch from the nut to the saddle. And I just recently published a complete uh, intonation video to teach you how to intonate your electric guitar. So check that out if you're interested in learning more about intonation. But we'll get to that a little bit later. And now let's drop this guy. So again, we are in zone two, close to zone three. Can we bend a little bit? Not really. Okay, I'm gonna drop this to A. Counterclockwise to detune. watching my tuner there a sharp see how many turns it's taking to get to a still at a sharp so occasionally now i'm going to go recheck what zone i'm in okay so as i'm making adjustments to my tuning every once in a while i'm going to go make sure that I'm still in zone tune there because tuning changes could change the zone that you're in. And then the changes you, you, you make just might be in vain because you might be in a certain zone that you shouldn't be one or three and they're not having the effects that you'd wanted to have. So right there it proved. I'm glad that I checked that. We're back in zone two. There's no changes being made here. And what is our tuning? Perfect day. We are good. So let's just double check this. I just want to be super close. I'm about to change these strings, so I don't need to be totally 100% right now. E, yep, 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 yep. Good. Excellent. So now we are in drop A. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to just change all the strings. And after I put them on, since, we're, since our bridge is already set for the tuning we want, which was drop A, in theory, when I put the new strings on and get them stretched out and get them nice and tight here, it should all already be in tune. Because one thing that I should have mentioned earlier is you don't make your tuning adjustments from the tuning keys at the headstock like you would on any other guitar. You make your tuning adjustments down here at the bridge. The tuning keys are basically to only get you into the zone that you need to be in. You know, who doesn't like to be in the zone? Uh, so anyways, like I'm saying, when we put the new strings on, because this is already set up, it should just be ready to go. I imagine some small adjustments will have to be made, little fine tunes, maybe some intonation, because we're putting on a different gauge, different brand, all that, but we're gonna stay in the same tuning. So I'm excited to see what happens. I hope you are too. And because this guitar and Evertune bridges like this are just a standard string through body uh, changing procedure, I mean, so many guitars have this exact same thing where the string just goes in through the back, comes out through the saddle, goes around the tuning knob and gets tightened up. I'm not going to bore you with the entire string change. We're gonna blast through it in fast motion starting now. Okay, and we are back. 
So uh, I didn't mention this before, but uh, the strings I put on here were the DR Tight Fit. I've been using DRs for about five years now, just loving them. I usually use the uh, the high beams for all my six string stuff. This is kind of like the maybe the first seven string restringing I've done. The one thing I didn't like about this pack though is that they had them the, the strings combined, the first and fourth, second and fifth, third and sixth. I've, I'd never seen that before and I didn't like it one bit. It threw me off my game and was kind of confusing. Like, so you pull out the second and fifth, do the fifth. What if you want to do them in order? You know, you got to set the second aside and then do you, you know, I, I just had to make decisions on the fly. I didn't like that one bit. So DR guys, come on, a couple extra, you know, whatever. Anyways, so what I did for each string, again, it was just a string through body, simple. You pull it up in there. And then what I would do is, is after I got it, uh, tightened or taut just by feel, then I'd listen and I'd get it up there. Oh, okay, I'm in zone three, back to zone two. Then I stretch in every string, which would detune it a little bit as the string stretches, especially new strings like this. Then I get it back up to zone three, back to zone two, I'm good. I did that for every string. So I'm close to zone three and so on and so on. And let's see where we're at. Oops, a daisy. All right, so seven, G sharp. So it's a little bit flat. And again, I didn't know what string gauge was on here before or brand or anything. So this gauge, they honestly feel a little bit thicker. Uh, that was the 11, sorry, 11 through 60 that we put on here. This feels a little bit thicker to me. So the, the difference in gauge means uh, a difference in tuning. And so we're gonna have to tune that up. G sharp, C sharp, way off. F sharp, way off. B, yeah, so we're off, way off on all these. Way off, all right. So we know we're in zone two. We'll start tuning, super easy. Just like I said, the tuning points are those are the spots in the saddles here. So let's start. Let's just start with the first string. We want that to be an E. So again, we're not tuning with the tuners on the headstock. We're tuning here. Hmm. I'm gonna sharpen this significantly. With this big of a change, I'm gonna check what zone I'm in again. Okay, getting close. I'm tightening this, turning it clockwise to get to E. Some sharpening. Check my zone. Still in zone two. Almost there. Check the zone. So we are shot it there a little. Remember I'm trying to get as close to zone three as possible, then I back it off about a quarter, half a turn. Good. We're looking for B on the second string. So again, super flat. Good. He's still good. B. Now we're looking for G on this guy. Third string. Only a step off. Good. 
good. Just remember, just checking my zone. I get it till I hear a change in pitch upward, then I know I'm in zone three and I back off. Oops. Getting close. Good. D for the fourth string. Not even close. Tightening to get up to D. Pretty good. I'm to A. So you guys get the picture here. E for the sixth. Awesome. The thickest and lowest tuned strings on a guitar, in my opinion, are always the touchiest. They're the ones that, you know, jobble around quite a bit on the tuner always. So just try to get close, close as possible. We're looking good there. Let's check this out. Perfect. Now remember these strings are brand new, so they're still stretching a little bit. I would do this again tomorrow after this is sat overnight and you're gonna be super, super close. And from that point, you should, by theory, never have to touch it again, you know, and until you go to change strings or tuning again next time. And also, because this is just set up now, if you can have some discipline and get the same strings as long as you like them, you know, get the same ones with the same gauges, it should never have, you should never have to do anything. You put them on and it should be good every time. It's if you change brand or gauges or tuning that you have to do this, but you saw how easy it was. So once I'm set up, this thing will be in tune and play great until the next time I need to do anything like that. We'll see what the intonation is like. I'll take it. Little bit flat there so we're going to chase the needle and move the saddle towards it which i think is going to be yes again find our zone probably have to retune slightly because we moved the saddle yep good a little bit more Perfect. Again, if you want an in-depth intonation video, check the description below. Again, a little bit. I'm not going to intonate this whole thing for you guys here, just, but I do want to show you. That's how easy it is. We're a little bit flat there. money. So I would continue, make sure the intonation is good on all those, and then you'll never have to touch it again. It's uh, it's really that easy. I know it's intimidating. I was intimidated by it at first too, and I got to say that the videos on the Evertune website are excellent. Did I already mention that? I can't remember, but they are, and uh, they show you the mechanics just from like an inside view of what's actually happening there, and that really helped me wrap my brain around the, uh, the Evertune and how to deal with it. And, you know, it's just like a Floyd. Once you get to know it, it becomes easier to work with, but it's way easier to work with than a Floyd and it stays in tune all the time. So I back them 100%. I've got another guitar. I'm gonna do a more drastic tuning change on in a separate video coming up soon, but I hope you learned something from this. Thanks for sticking with me throughout the whole day. If you, if you, throughout the whole thing, if you did, I appreciate that. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel as I've got loads of other 
guitar maintenance and tutorials on the channel. If you want to see specifically how I change strings and my methods for that, I've got multiple videos to do that. And I recommend you check those out right here in my string changing series tutorial playlist. Appreciate everybody watching. Give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful. And I hope to see you again on another one.